Now, the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, is where we'll begin. And if you would just stand with me just for a moment as we open up with God's word. This is what Isaiah 43 says, beginning in verse 16. It says, I am the Lord who opened up the way through the waters, making a dry path through the sea. I called forth the mighty army of Egypt with all its chariots and horses. I drew them beneath the waves, and they drowned. Their lives were stuffed out like smoldering candlewick. But forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I am going to do, for I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. So God, I pray again for these next few moments as we honor you with your word. And Father God, as we talk about how we make decisions and how we decide, Father God, that we put you at the forefront of all of those things. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Well, high five the person next to you as you're seated. I know we do a lot of that, right? I, I'm not going to go as far as the kiss thing, but anyway, I'm just saying. <laughs> But a little context here is we're talking about the book of Isaiah, and a little context, this was actually just making way. When he says, I'm making a way, he's actually providing, uh, uh, he's he's, uh, uh, talking about the need for a Savior. He's actually paving the way for Christ to come. He's actually talking about, boy, and he's like referring back to the the Red Sea when the sea was parted and the Israelites walked across on dry land. And and I like what he says. He goes, and then the water came in and snuffed them out like a candle wick. That's kind of great, right? It's like mafia or something. I don't know. But that was the context. He's saying, man, I did all these amazing things. I, I led the, kid, the children of Israel out of the, uh, 40, uh, out of the captivity of Egypt. Of, and as they were going out, a cloud by day and fire by night, I, my presence was always with them. I opened up the waters of, uh, of the Red Sea. I, I gave them manna. I gave them quail. All of these things. And, and you're like, wow, that's pretty amazing. God did some amazing things, and he said, hey, that is nothing compared to what I'm getting ready to do. That's nothing compared, because I'm getting to do a new thing. It's already begun. And that was the way of salvation for us. That was the way that God provided for us that new thing. And so I just want to challenge you today. We're going to go, we're talking a little bit about what it is and how we decide things and how we do things. And understand that it doesn't matter what's happened in the past. What matters is what God's doing now and moving forward. You can do nothing to do those things. So I want to ask you this question. So what do you think the difference, what do you think is the difference between those people that are really fulfilled in life, all right? When I talk about really fulfilled, what's the difference? Those people that are really fulfilled in life, again, what I mean, they have, a, they have great, meaningful relationships. They're strong financially, and they're generous with the people around them. They are fulfilled in life, and they have very meaningful uh, uh, ministries. They have very meaningful love in their life, right? And when I talk about fulfilled, you guys are all like, man, then we woke up, right? Wow, that's fantasy land. I go, there are people, though, that you're in your world that have fulfilled lives, that live those things. So what's the difference? What do you think the difference is between those people and the rest of us, (laughs) right? The rest of the world, those that are struggling with relationships, they're just trying to hold their marriage together or to keep their kids off drugs. (laughs) Those who are struggling financially and don't even know how they could be generous or even how to begin to be generous. They want to be, but they don't feel like they could be. Those who know there's something more in life, but can't quite find it. Those that feel empty. What's the difference between those that are fulfilled and those that are struggling? And I realize we all struggle at points, and there's times that we all have, man, we're fulfilled in moments, right? We all have those times in our life, but sometimes it seems like, you know, people get more consistent. And sometimes, you know, I tell you the, the biggest killer of joy is comparison when we start comparing our lives to others. When we start looking at the Facebook reel or the Instagram reel or the Snapchat reel or the whatever real. I was going to try to make something up. It didn't work. But I'm just saying, so as long, you know, we try to do those things and we're like, oh man, that person lives a really fulfilled life. And I've just got this, man, this poor life or whatever. I'm just not that person. And you know, it's my lot in life. It's my cross to bear. You know, I mean, it's just, you've heard those things. I'm just saying. But again, I think about it. What's the difference between those that are fulfilled and those that are not? What's the difference between those that aren't struggling and those that are struggling? Well, I just want to tell you, 
what it's not. It's not what a lot of people think. It's not what a lot of people think. The difference is not their intelligence. It's not their talent. It's not even their appearance because we've all seen smart people who are miserable, right? We've all seen those people. It's not how good they look, right? We've seen good-looking people make really dumb decisions, right? You guys, are you awake? You with me? All right, okay, just making sure. <laughs> you know, again, a talented people that are broke, a talented people that can't hold relationships. But what would be the difference in all of those things? And I would tell you that it's the decisions that they make. It's the decisions that we make. I would say it boils down to those decisions, our decisions. And our decisions are incredibly and indescribably important, right? The things that we do, the things that we pick, the things that we say, how we, uh, the, the choices that we're making on a regular basis, we're all faced with those decisions. And so I just want to tell you this, your decisions can make uh, your, de- your decisions uh, can make up who you are. Your decisions can make up the direction that you go. Your decisions, the choices that you make, right? You guys agree with me. This isn't like Tony Robbins, like inspirational speaking or whatever it is. And I'm going somewhere, and I, and I want to challenge you because we're starting this new series just simply called Predecide. And over the next several weeks, we're going to talk about how important your decisions are, and we're going to look at God's Word. And so today is just kind of an introduction, and I want to take a deep dive into God's Word and what it says about especially the choices that we're making. And see, the problem is, is that most of us, we're not really good decision makers, right? We don't always make the right choices. We want to eat right. This is like the number one thing like for me. And so, you know, we want to eat right. But then somebody throws two dozen donuts on the host table out there (laughs) and says, I just can't walk by. That would be a bad steward of what the church is buying donuts for, right? (laughs) Trust me. I just want you to know that when we started, we put fruit out there along with the donuts. What did we go home with? Fruit. (laughs) Exactly. I even put a veggie tray out there one time, and I got cussed, I think. (laughs) But we don't want to eat right, and then we decide to eat more than we should. We want to be wise with our money, but we decide to buy things that we can't afford. Right? i got to have it. Rent, PlayStation 5. Rent, PlayStation 5. PlayStation 5. Every time. No, it's not true. All right, I'm just saying. But it's true. We want to be wise with our words. But sometimes we say things we regret. It's never happened to you, right? It's never happened. You've never said anything that you wish you could pull back. The truth is, is that we all have those moments. We all make poor decisions. We want to do the right thing. We want to make decisions, but a lot of times we do the wrong thing. We want to love people around us. This is a big one, right? We want to love the people around us, but unfortunately, sometimes our decisions end up hurting those around us. And sometimes I had the opportunity this week, I had the opportunity to... uh, go talk to our football team for Alvarado High School, and um, they do a meal every Thursday, and, uh, and I was asked to come and just pray with them and give a short devotion, and I was given a little bit of a heads up by some decisions that were made by some players uh, um, prior, to this, prior to this week's game, and they played in Decatur, and, um, and I was given a little bit of a heads up and said, you know, Pastor Marty, would you be able to talk about sometimes when we make decisions, how it affects others? And I thought about that for a moment. I go, wow, that's just kind of a, I don't know, coincidence? I think not. (laughs) That's exactly what I'm talking about this weekend. And the person I was talking to said, man, if you could just. And so I sat down and I talked with this football team. I didn't stand up. I didn't sit down. I stood and talked to them. Talking about, guys, the decisions that you make affect those around you. You might think that it's a personal thing. You might think, well, I'm just going to cover my own tail here, and then it's not going to worry about affecting anybody else. But as a result, it affected everybody else on that team. And the same is true for us when we make choices and decisions and those things. It affects those around us. It affects our families. It affects our relationships. It affects how we uh, uh, spend our money. It affects how we don't spend our money. It affects all of those things. Our decisions play a big part in everything that we do. And so we want to be good decision makers, but the problem is we tend to not be. 
So again, I want to just start. So maybe if you, if you've ever done something that you regret, or if you've ever made a poor decision, if you've ever, I know I'm speaking to most of us in the room. There were a few of you just kind of just straightening it out a little bit, you know. But we all have these challenges in this area. So I want to start with just asking this, uh, with answering this question. Why is it that we struggle to make good decisions? Why is it that we struggle? Paul even said, he goes, man, why do I do the things I don't want to do? And I don't do the things that I know that I'm supposed to do. This is Paul, the Apostle Paul. And so we're all in that boat. We all struggle with those things. So, so we want to do the right thing. We, want to end up, we don't want to do the wrong thing. So what I want to do again today, I just want to kind of give you an introduction of what we're going to be doing over the next several weeks. So sit tight, hang with me. And then at the end, I'm going to ask you to make a commitment to be a part of what we're doing over the next several weeks. Man, I love to see your faces here, and I love that we can gather uh, in this facility, and we have an online group as well. We're live on YouTube, which I think is great. We've had problems with Facebook. Anybody else? Okay, no, just don't even answer that. It's not for the reasons you think, Pastor Marty, I know, but I'm just saying. But, you know, I want you to be a part of what we're doing, especially over the next thing, because I really think that this will really help us, especially as we've, we're, you know, six weeks into a new school year. We've got all these things happening. September is a big back-to-church month as we celebrated last week. And I want to just maybe start off these things. They always say September and January are the biggest times of year. You know, January, we talk about our New Year's resolutions and how we're going to join the gym and we go for two weeks and we paid a year in advance. I mean, it's just, that's just those challenging times. But September is also those things. You know what? The kids are back in school. Let's, let's get back into church. Maybe let's get back to doing some things. So that's just a big decision-making month for us. And so I really felt it was appropriate that we go down this road and we talk about the choices that we make. So why do we struggle to make good decisions? Well, I think the first one is this. First of all, we're overwhelmed, right? We're overwhelmed with choices. We're overwhelmed. Anybody get a little bit of like, man, I just like mind locked or, you know, you get this indecisive thing happening in your head. You start to overthink. I know I've told you many stories and there's some in the room that won't go to a store with me because of my overthinking and my assessment and my lack of decision making and go back to the same store four times before I buy that candy bar. I'm just saying, it's just like you start thinking about all of those things, but we're overwhelmed with choices Some studies have shown, get this, some studies have shown that we will make upwards of around 35,000 decisions a day. Some studies show 35,000 decisions, right? You're just like, oh man, that's a lot. I can't decide. I'm just saying, uh, those decisions from the moment you wake up, what do I eat? What do I wear? When do I look at social media? Do I like? Do I comment? Do I scroll up? Do I scroll down? Do I swipe right? Do I swipe left? I don't know. Those are the decisions that we seem to do. Do We do all of these things. How do I drive to work? I might do a different way. What am I going to say to people when they talk to me? How am I going to interact? You see what I'm saying? You're like, oh, wow, I guess you could see how 35,000 decisions would be made in a single day by all those things, unless like you're at home by yourself. I don't know. But anyway, that was a really bad joke. I get it. All right. But because we make so many choices, sometimes our decision-making muscle or our ability to make decisions, we get tired. We get tired of making decisions. We go through what they call, what the experts call decision-making fatigue. Can you see that happening? Decision-making fatigue. And you're just like, you're right, man, I'm really tired. I can't decide. I'm just with you on this. But what happens is as the volumes of decisions increase, the quality of the decisions that we make decrease, decrease. So I think about this when you come home, uh, maybe it's in the evening, and I think probably the number one question when you walk through that door, whether it's a husband or a wife or a child, whatever it is, the number one question is going to be, what's for dinner, right? What's for dinner? And if you haven't planned, you're like, well, I'm not sure. Let's just go out and grab something. Where would you like to go? Oh, I don't care. You decide. (laughs) Oh, you guys are tracking with me now. All right. You woke up. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I I don't care. You decide. Well, what if we go down to Massey's and get a baked potato? No, I had that last night. I don't care, though. We can get whatever. Well, what if we go to Taco Bell? Oh, no. You know I never like Taco Bell. 
Well, what if we go over to Whataburger? You always like, no, no, I had that like a couple days ago. I mean, right, but you decide whatever is good. Oh, you guys are with me now. It's so true, and it's just like, okay, I'm just going to go get something I'll bring back. I'll go to the quick trip and get one of their sandwiches, and we're all not happy. But I'm just saying. It's just that we have so many decisions. Again, because we're making decisions day after day, moment by moment, all day long, we get tired of making decisions. And then it becomes difficult to make wise decisions because all day at the office you've been making good decisions. And then when you come home, you're just tired. And all of a sudden, you know what? You don't want to react when the kids are acting up. You're like, man, I'm going to be calm. But because you've had a rough day, does that calm always translate? When you're like, you know what? I need to be patient in this moment. And you're trying to tell yourself to be patient, but then all of a sudden you're just yelling. Right? Right? I know you can relate. I mean, I've been down that road, and I know you all go down that road. Trust me, if you've had small kids, you go down that road. <laughs> you know, you, then you decide, you know what, I'm going to eat right tonight, and I've decided I'm not going to, man, I know, I just opened up that gallon of Bluebell ice cream, and I'm just going to have one scoop, and that one scoop turned into the whole stinking thing. Right? It's just like, well, I want to make the right choice, but you know what, I'm tired. I deserve this. Have you ever say that? Yeah, I deserve this. All right. And so I almost said something, and I, we'd have to delete it from the tape. All right. But our wise, even our, our financial choices, you're saving money, you're paying off debt, you're making the good choices. And then all of a sudden, in a moment of weakness and tiredness, you take that, and instead of paying rent, you buy the PlayStation 5. I'm just saying, though, so sometimes we get tired of making those decisions. So we try to make this good decisions, but because of the volume, the quality will decrease. And the second problem for many of us is that we're afraid of making the wrong choice. Anybody afraid of making a wrong choice? Yeah, absolutely. Anybody an overthinker in the room? Yes, I've already been down this road. Tamara's pointing at me. Thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> I'm the one talking. All right, just saying. <laughs> but the truth is, it's like I, I tend to overthink. Well, what if I choose wrong? What if I don't make the right choice? You know, I, I just think of that movie, He Chose Poorly. If you guys think about that. Okay, tell me after church, if you tell me what that is, I'll give you a donut. All right, I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> or He Has Chosen Wisely. And you, we kind of get locked. We're so afraid of making the wrong choice. We don't want to miss God's will. So a lot of times we'll analyze something. Well, I'm not sure if that's the perfect school. I'm not sure if, uh, uh, if that's the perfect job, or I'm not sure if this is the perfect person to date. And so since sometimes we're not sure, then there's times we just don't make any decision. And can I tell you, indecision is a decision. It's one of the 35,000 you make on a day. All right, indecision, because actually it is. And so we struggle to make good decisions. We're overwhelmed with all the choices. We're afraid of making the wrong choice. And then this one, I just, I think, is where we all land. We all land. On number three is this. We let emotions overrule our logic. We let emotions overrule our logic. Stay with me. I know that this is a lot, and I promise when, in the next few weeks, we're going to really uh, talk about God's Word, or we're going to talk about how God will help us, especially in this process, and we talk about pre-decide. But so many of us struggle in our decision-making, and the process really breaks down because we let our emotions jump in the middle of everything. We let our emotions jump in. If we've had a really bad day, whatever it is, that we're, a bad day at school, a bad day at work, a bad day with the kids, I mean, we tend to just like our emotions kind of just overrule everything that we try to do. Again, you might spend more time uh, analyzing. We think about uh, uh, like how we break things down. Our emotions get in there. And so sometimes we're just like, well, you know what? I need to take a break. I'm just going to, uh, you know, what's on Netflix. If you've ever tried to spend time deciding what you're going to watch on Netflix, you'll spend more time trying to figure out what you're going to watch than the time it takes you to watch what you want to watch. All right, so you want to binge that series that's like 12 million uh, season long, whatever it is, and uh, you're spending so much time trying to figure it out because we tend to just, that's the kind of the direction uh, that we go. You look at everything, you overanalyze all of those things. And then sometimes we're like, we're, the small things like that, we, we overanalyze and we think, and then it's the things that really matter is an impulse decision. You know, all of a sudden we're just making quick. We don't think through it. We're just like, oh, yeah, let's do that. And it has life impactful meaning because sometimes we let our emotions 
get in there. I overanalyze. I will tell you, ask Tamara. She pointed at me earlier. It's a true story. I tend to overanalyze things that really don't matter. And sometimes when it comes to important decisions, I, I don't really sometimes analyze at all. I just let the emotions kind of decide what we're going to do. It's a challenge for all of us. And just think about this. Okay, so your kids upset you. Logic says be patient, but emotion says yell as loud as you can. I know that never happens. This is just scenarios, okay? This is just scenarios. I should have, anyway, all right, I'm going to move on, all right? Sometimes like an unexpected temptation, you're like, ooh, that's dangerous, and your emotions are like, yeah, let's do it. Let's make it happen. All of a sudden, our emotions step in. And so often, it's the emotional decisions that end up hurting us or hurting others the most. And that's why I say whatever you do, don't make permanent decisions based on temporary emotions. In fact, I know Lewis and I have had many conversations, and, and he preaches this at the table at his house. Decisions based on emotion are never right or are always wrong. Right? Girls are like, yeah, he says that all the time. But there's so much truth to that. When we get into emotions and our emotions take over, the decisions that we make can never be made in the right frame of mind, are made to benefit anything. So the quality of our decisions determine the quality of our lives. We make our decisions, and our decisions make us. It's true, right? And so again, that's why we have to really sometimes take a step back. And so one of the best ways to live a forward-looking, people-loving, God-glorifying life is decide before you get into the situation. Predecide. What am I going to do when I'm faced with this? And uh, I know I think about myself like, you know, I've shared with you even weight loss stories. And uh, whenever Tamara and I would talk about what restaurant we would go to, I would pull up their menu and decide before I ever walk through the front door. Does that happen now? No, because I'm an emotional person. I make those emotional decisions and I binge eat ice cream and all those. I'm just saying. But I, I just think it's kind of like the same thing. And so we would decide before we walked in. Or I, I remember like early on, I was really in like deep weight loss mode. And I, I lost a ton of weight. And I was able to do that just because I pre-decided. And so they would bring out a, tw- uh, a, a foot-long sandwich. I would cut it in half and have them bring me out a box. And I'd sit the other half in a box and close it and say, I'll save that for later. Who does that? Right? And so, but it worked. It was one of those things. I made the decision before I got there. And so we're going to talk about that over the next uh, several weeks is what the power of pre-deciding is. Understanding that in situations, you're going to make the decision before you ever get in there. It's the power of choosing ahead of time before, you know, before you're in that moment. And with God's help as followers of Christ is to ask God to help us make those decisions. I love what Proverbs says. Proverbs says this. It says, commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. Right? Commit to the Lord. Hey, God, I'm going to trust you in this situation. I'm going to trust you. And before I ever get in there, you know, if you ever walk into a car dealer uh, lot, which I think now everything's online, and I don't know. But Tamara and I always have a plan before we walk in there. Okay, how many ways can we say no? Right? We do. It's so fun. We'll have this. We'll be driving down. Okay, we want to look at this one particular vehicle. And, and uh, as we're going in there, how many ways can we say no? What if they say this? Oh, no. Thank you so much for offering that. What if they say this? Oh, no. We're not going to go down that road right now. What about this? Oh, no. I'm so sorry. We practice it literally before we ever get into the room because we know that pressure in those things and actually looking at what you're thinking about buying can really have the influence and you make that emotional decision. Are we always that good? Oh, no. <laughs> But it's always good to kind of have a game plan. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he will what? He will direct your path. He'll direct your path. That's who we're talking about. So whatever you do, Scripture says, commit it to the Lord. If you're dating somebody, commit your dating relationship to the Lord. If you're married, commit your marriage to the Lord. Right? You're just like, well, this is kind of one-on-one stuff. Absolutely it is, but somehow we always tend to forget. Somehow as Christ followers, we seem to just kind of maybe veer around some of these things, and then our indecision is actually a decision, and it ends up hurting us and those around us. Commit those ways to the Lord. Commit the parenting of your children to the Lord. 
I've said this many times when I talk about my kids who are grown now and and I sit there and I try to fight battles for them and I just have to remind myself and God reminds me, you dedicated Kayla to the Lord when she was a baby. Why are you trying to take her back now? Are you, you committed Justin when he was a baby? Why are you trying to take him back now? It's like, God, I'm going to trust you in this situation. It's committing our ways. He will establish your plans. When you seek him first in his kingdom, what does he say? All of these things. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then it says what? All these things will be added unto you. It's predecided. It's making those decisions. And so whenever you're faced with a scenario, whatever it is, and I don't know where you're at in life right now, you can answer that question. Maybe you're in a situation where maybe you're feeling pressure to make some decisions that really won't help you. Well, maybe if you pre-decide before you ever got to that situation, you can like, you know what? This is a decision I'm going to make. This is where I'm going to stand or I'm guarding our finances. So when I have to make a big decision, I'm going to make sure before I walk in to make this decision that I've made these different steps to not uh, go down a road that's going to hurt me or my family. Maybe you're watching what you're eating. (laughs) All right, walk way around the hospitality table. I don't know. And as your kids are eating that big donut in front of you, you know. But if you pre-decide, you made the decision before you ever get there. And I know you think about eating. Maybe it's a small thing, but maybe weight's an issue for you. Maybe overspending is an issue for you. Maybe losing your temper is an issue for you. You've got to commit those things. You've got to decide ahead of time. And sometimes it's asking, what's the wise thing to do? If you like to spend money, I I love this statement, but dad, it was on sale. 10% off. God was speaking that I was supposed to buy that. In fact, it would be irresponsible for me not to buy it. You guys, you justify it, right? Don't look at me. Don't judge me. I know where you guys are at. Again, you have to pre-decide. And I'm going to trust God. I'm going to go to him because I've pre-decided. I'm going to pray. I'm going to take my burdens. I'm going to cast my cares on him. Somebody cuts you off in traffic. This is a big one for me, all right? You know, I just want to challenge you, man, to pray that they go to heaven instead of telling them (laughs) to go to a hot place. (laughs) Right? You pre-decide. You know, don't tell them they're number one. (laughs) All right? Don't give them the one-handed raise. (laughs) All right, I just said I'm not going to demonstrate for you. (laughs) I promise. All right. We're going to pre-decide. We're going to pre-decide on how we respond in those moments. Because when you look all through Scripture, man, over and over and over again, the decisions that the people in the Scriptures made were pre-decided. We're pre-decided. I think about Abraham when he took Isaac up in, in the book of Genesis. I believe it's chapter 22. He took Isaac up and God said, man, I want you to sacrifice Isaac. <clears throat> and Abraham, you're like, oh man, I'm sure that he was going through this whole scenario in his head, hiking up that hill. And there is no doubt that he was questioning and going through all of these things. But early in life, Abraham said, I am going to commit to do what the Lord my God asked me to do. I'm going to obey him regardless of what he asked me because I know if I step out and what he's asked me to do, he will always take care of me. He made the decision, God, I'm going to trust you. Even when it seems like I shouldn't at this moment, I'm going to trust you. Again, it's those things when Ruth, Ruth made the decision, no matter where you go, I'm going. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Think about Daniel. Daniel, man, he pre-decided a lot of stuff because he was taken into captivity and the king was taking the best of the best and, and he was trying to make them uh, uh, go down their, the road and, and all of these things. And Daniel, before he, got into that, before he ever got in that situation, in fact, we're going to spend some time on, in Daniel uh, during this series, but he said, I am, before I ever get there, I will not defile myself. What he said, I will not defile himself with the royal food and wine. He said, I'm making that decision before I ever get there. And so have you ever, guys, anybody ever done a Daniel fast? That's a challenge. Maybe we should do that as a church. All right, anyway. (laughs) 
But again, it's talking about, hey, I am not going to, and I'm going to do this. And because of those decisions, man, they would look at him and realize that Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they all decided that they weren't going to defile themselves with the king's food and they were going to eat the food offered to idols, man, they kept looking at him, man, your guys' skin looks really good. How come you have so much energy? Man, you're, you guys are like, wow, you're glowing. And it's just because we predecided that we were going to eat the right food. And we weren't going to defile ourselves with the food that was offered to idols. It was pre-decisioned. And so I want to ask you this as we get ready to wrap up here. What do you value? What is the most important things to you? When people talk about you or think about you, what do you want them to say? What do you want them to say? What do you want to be known by? What do you want to be characterized by when people describe you? You know, is it me, man, that person, they're always making the wrong choices. And we've had those conversations, right? You're like, man, I think about so-and-so. You know what? If they would have just made better decisions and better choices, you know, is that what people say about me or what they say about you? I mean, I want to have that good reputation, I want to be known as somebody who's just, man, takes time to trust God. And again, well, we're all going to fail at moments, right? We all, none of us are perfect. But again, we commit it to the Lord. And so what do you value? I value integrity. Or, or you might say, I value faithfulness. Or I want to be faithful. My God's faithful to me. I want to be faithful to my spouse. I want to be faithful to my kids. I want to be faithful to my friends. That's what I want to be known for. I want to be pure. Maybe it's generosity. You know, because again, when your values are clear, your decisions are a whole lot easier. Right? When your values are clear, your decisions are a whole lot easier. And so again, I just think about when we talk about those decisions and, we make, uh, and we're faced with those challenges and we trust God. We're like, God, I'm going to trust you in these moments. And I'm going to give him, uh, the, commit to him the ways and whatever it is that I'm facing. And God, I'm going to trust you to direct my path. The scripture says the steps of the righteous, they are ordered of God. And so we want to trust him with those decisions. And so decisions determine direction and direction determines your destiny. Our unwise decisions tend to compound. They grow, right? It's just like you can look back and go, man, if I would have made this decision here, then I might be here. But instead, I made this decision, and now I'm here, and I'm not really in a good place. Well, the same is true. Our wise decisions, the right choices, the right decisions, they affect us in a positive way and those around us as well. And so our decisions. And so, again, it's time to take our lives back. It's time to pre-decide. It's time to do what we're called to do. So as our team comes up and we get ready to finish our time, I just want to challenge you to predetermine before you ever get there, when you're faced with whatever scenario that you will determine to take whatever action it is to help you understand what God is doing, to commit it to Him. It's just so important because I know for me, I know for me that I have challenges in so many different areas. And so over the next several weeks, just commit with me that, hey, we're going to take time and we're going to understand how our decisions are made. And be ready for what God has for you. And so we want to be consistent. That's what we're talking about over the next several weeks. We're going to talk about what it is to be consistent in our lives. You know, again, when we do the right thing, we make those right decisions to be consistent in those things. We're going to be devoted. We're going to talk about what it is to be devoted to God and and what that looks like for us. Uh, We're going to be generous. We're going to be faithful. We're going to be finishers. So many times we get into situations and sometimes it's easier for us to pull the eject button than it is to see it through. So we're going to be finishers. When Jesus was on the cross, he cried out, it is finished. He came and did what he said he was going to do. And that was to give his life for us. We're not going to worry about what anybody else thinks about us because you know why? We're who God says we are. We're who God says we are. So I want to challenge you. I know this is a little bit of a long introduction to the rest of the next weeks coming up. I just want you to commit with me to be a part of this over the next several weeks. I really believe God has something for you. And I believe that God said, man, I came to give you life. And not just life, but life abundantly, a fulfilled life in Him. So God, I just pray right now, Lord, that 
you would guide and direct our steps. And Father, that you would stir within us. God, that you would give us wisdom. And Father God, just like Jesus predecided to serve and to give his life no matter what. And I know there might have been times when he wanted to just say, God, I don't want to, Dad, I don't want to step into this. But it's not about me. It's about what you have for me. And God, that you would give us wisdom and direct our steps, Lord, that we would be finishers, God, that we would commit to be a part of what you have for us. And so I just want to ask you, as we're just in this moment of prayer, I'm just going to ask, hey, would you be willing to say, hey, I want to be a part of this, and I want to, I want to pre-decide, I want to make the right choices, and I can look back in my life and see where I haven't made the best decisions, and because of those things, I'm paying for some of those things now. But I'm here to tell you that it's not too late. You can pre-decide. You can fix those things and you can choose to commit your ways and your path to God if you would just take that step. And so if you're here today and you say, you know what, that's me. I want to be a part of this and I want to trust God with what he has for me and I want to hear what his word says to me. And I want to be able to make those right choices and to pre-decide when I uh, can make those decisions long before I ever get into those situations. If that's you, would you just simply raise your hand? And I just want you to know my hand is raised. <laughs> my hand is raised. So, Father, I pray by the power of your Holy Spirit and by the power of your word, God, you would do within us what we don't have the power to do, Father, so we could serve and honor you and how we commit our ways to you, Lord, that we would trust you in every situation. And, Father, God, I thank you so much for a church, Lord, that wants the best that you have for us. And so I thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit that's at work right now. God, that we would predecide. I thank you for that in Jesus' name. As you continue to pray, whether you're watching online or you're in this room, you know, one of the best decisions that you will ever make is to be a follower of Christ and understand the price that was paid for us because you know what? Jesus came to this earth and he walked as a man. He felt as a man. He hurt as a man. But yet the Bible says he did not sin. And he came to give his life for us that, that, we had, uh, that, that we no longer had to go through all of these things for forgiveness of sins because Jesus bridged the gap between, our, uh, between us and our Father. And he gave his life as a sacrifice for us that we would have life. He took on the sins for us. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whoever would believe in him would not perish have everlasting life. Jesus pre-decided, I'm going to give my life for mankind, for forgiveness. But you understand that's a free gift, but the gift is a gift that we have to accept. We have to say, Christ, I accept you as my Savior. I invite you into my life, and I accept your forgiveness of my sins. And so if you're here, or you're watching online, and you're part of this, and you've never done that, you've never given your heart to Christ, You've never accepted him as your savior. Today is your moment. You're not here by accident. You're not watching by accident. You're here intentional because God loves you so much. And so if that's you and you say today, pastor, I want to give my heart to Jesus. I don't want to live for myself anymore. I want to pre-decide. I want to decide to choose him. If that's you, would you just simply raise your hand? Would you respond in the chat? Church, would you pray with me? Nobody prays alone. Father, Thank you for sending your son to die for me. Today I give you my life. No longer to live for myself, but to live for you. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Would you stand with me as we close our time today? I'm going to do something a little bit different today. In fact, we're going to, uh, uh, I'm going to ask Suzanne and the team to lead us in worship and I'm going to ask Tamara to join me down here. I'm going to ask Brent and Joy and some of our prayer team, if you don't know who they are, uh, again, I'm not going to ask them all to come down here. I just asked a couple to come and stand with me up here. But we're going to worship one more time. And as we begin to worship, and maybe there's some things in your life that are happening, I want to invite you to come as we worship to pray. And then I want to just, I'm going to dismiss the rest of you as you feel time. It's time for you to leave. Man, thanks so much for being at Grace Point Church today. Because at Grace Point Church, we want you to experience a place that you belong because I feel like we're so much better together. And so as they lead us in this last worship song, take a moment where you are and just worship with us. If you want prayer, we're going to be down here. Uh, if it's time for you to leave, man, please take that moment as well. 
to worship with us one last time. And then I would just say, you're free to consider yourselves dismissed. Let's worship. Thank you, God. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart. Thank you.